Hey, this is Deagle Beagle. I figured I'd make a video on how to team build because I've been getting a request from a few people, I would say, on how to team build. Mostly just like one or mostly like one person, but uh, I think there is another person asking me as well on how to team build, but mistakes to avoid for regionals and other little tournaments. There's a lot of other tournaments you can join that are free and you can even win money and like the Nina Bros tournaments. I know they're giving away $500 a week, but I don't know how that's distributed exactly. I'm assuming only Top Cut gets it and I don't know from there, but at least you have the experience to play for free and there's the Pokey Melly ones. I think on Monday, Mondays, Nina Bros are on Saturdays and there might be a few other ones like the Durant's tournaments. Now, I'm gonna go through this. What not to do when team building strategies and mons to avoid. Typically, I would make the exact opposite video of this where it's like, I feel a lot of times people are too close-minded and just assume that there's only one or two ways to use something when in reality there could be many different ways. It's like when I made the video on Salamence, how to use it, theory mining with it, it's like, well, I found, I've been playing the game for like my whole life. So that's like, I mean, 20 something years off and on. And it's like, we're still learning stuff about the game and stuff that we think should be used a different way. We find out later actually probably shouldn't, or maybe it should, but then the meta changes soon and and it's not good anymore. Or at least it's things to try out and you can take it or leave it. We're not necessarily, when I make, when I or Jamie Boyd or someone else makes these guides on how to use certain Pokemon, we're not saying it's for sure the best set. Like most of those things I haven't really, I haven't really used from experience. It's more like my first impressions, like what would I think of trying out with this Pokemon? Like I, I know it, for example, if I look at Salamence, you look at Salamence, one of my first thoughts with it was I keep having a problem with Meowth's Grot and I was looking at different multi-hit Pokemon and it learns Dual Wing Beat. And then we find out later that, yeah, Dual Wing Beat's a good move, but you might do even better with it if you use like Dracometer with Life Orb and whatnot. It really depends on the meta and the team. But it's like stuff like that may have been used in the far past too, but it's been so long since it was good, for example, that we're like, we don't even think of that. And like somebody like Jody does well in the tournament with something like Life Orb, Hurricane, Salamence, and it's like, oh, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. Even though you might say, I, I might have thought about Dragonite with Hurricane, but I never thought of salamance and maybe salamance is better in some ways or vice versa maybe you think oh um i like salamance with hurricane and dracometer but i don't know if i want that ability intimidate because i'm worried about a define or whatever so then it's like even though you could run mirror or mana it's like well there is multi-scale or inner focus dragonite probably multi-scale if you're using the special one because inner focus it used to be primarily to stop like fake outs and flinches from like rock slide but now it's like i think people normally think of it as a way to stop intimidate from countering a physical pokemon so if you're not physical it's like you probably should be special i mean if you're not physical then you don't have usually a huge use for inner focus even though it is still good against flinches okay um they really nerfed Intimidate over the years. So here's what a lot of new players get stuck on. And usually veteran players don't get that stuck on. They only use stuff they like pretty much just as like, yeah, they like to use it for fun just to troll people or see how well they can do it just so they can say, even though they like never pick this Pokemon in a serious tournament, they just pick the other five. They're like, oh, I won the tournament with a whatever bad Pokemon Sunflora or whatever it's like yeah but did you pick it like unless you picked it like almost every game then 
that doesn't mean that much even though it does maybe waste a slot on your six Pokemon it wastes one of those slots and that is valuable but it's not anything to necessarily brag about okay and then the next thing is using mons that have like no potential now this all goes back to using low tier uh, Pokemon you should not use low tier Pokemon unless they are actually um, high tier on your team so you have Pokemon like let's just go to the tier list actually that doesn't even count because I kind of eliminated off the top tier the inconsistent stuff but going through this list you have a Pokemon like Sawsbuck and maybe you realize yes it is very underrated because if you get up Sun with it it could do really well but the thing is is like you have to have Sun up with it probably for it to do well so it's naturally probably not going to be on average as high tier as something else because if you have to switch in like a drought Pokemon for it or you have to use manual sunny day for it to work well then it's that's a natural drawback because you might have to spend a turn doing that and you may rely too much on on its ability and the weather to do well it's like well even if you do have Torkoal you still have to worry about them changing the weather or not so that's a natural liability when you have a Pokemon that's only good if weather is up so that's why certain Pokemon that are weather reliant like Sawsbuck and even Lilligant I took off the top tier because of that all, pretty much all the chlorophyll and swift swimmers and Pokemon that are only good if they use something like Hurricane um, even though there are some Pokemon that I think are good even if they don't use Hurricane even though Hurricane might be their main move they can still do other things and do pretty well with it like Iron Jugulus I think uh, in theory would use hurricane as its main move with a rain team for it to do well that would be its niche because it would hit a lot harder than acrobatics from roaring moon even or at least maybe not a lot harder but it would hit decently harder and especially since amoongus tends to ev more on the defensive side and pokemon in general tend to ev more on the defensive side except special but that is somewhat changing in series two but i say it's mostly just changing for the assault best pokemon like iron hands like psy shock used to be a worse move until like all this assault vest was used and then i like psy shock for egg now because of that plus it pays to use moves two that can't be imprisoned by the enemy so if psychic's more common um, then you might want to use psy shock sometimes so they can't imprison it but also because they don't prepare for it I meant to say uh, using I'll get to this later but using stuff that is uh, that is all very standard I'll explain that later um, but first I'm gonna go through this in order so low t lower tier like even I would say don't use any Pokemon unless you put them in top tier and by top tier I literally mean like here's how I define top tier a Pokemon that doesn't need to rely on um, needing much synergy I should say or resources so that's why I, you won't see Hydreigon in here um, I only put it in here with the asterisk next to it knowing it's not high tier but it's so commonly used that it's something I have to keep thinking about even if I wouldn't use it personally I gotta turn my phone off I keep getting all these messages okay anyways um, so you can look at the tier list and see that you don't see any chlorophyll Pokemon you don't see any swift swimmers uh, like hand rock I actually need to um, I meant to move to great tier because it used to seem like it was good enough outside of sand 
but um, I'll just say decent, uh, um, but not good enough. Okay, and let's go back to the list. So, Pokemon that, here's another example. Um, no, I already said Pokemon that rely on a defensive Terrastall, didn't I? And I said Hydreigon. Where was it? It was... No, it was probably right here. Hydreigon. It relies on defensive Terrastalls to be good. Now, you could kind of say the same for Roaring Moon, but it depends. If a Pokemon is super good... Uh, when it does ter defensively Terra stall, then I suppose it's worth it. Um, okay, so I'm going to say Hydra is not so great when it Terra's that it overcomes that drawback of, you know, having the Terra stalls to survive an attack. And you notice Brute Bonnet has is not in here because it has seven weaknesses and a four times weakness to bug so it shares that same idea with hydreigon of it's not good defensively and this game seems a lot more about who has the best defensive typing while having good offensive typing as well i guess you could say that for all generations but especially this one i just feel like they're going to try to hit you with a super effective attack and when you're super affected by like pretty much everything you can't do that much okay let's go to the next one so <clears throat> not learning how to properly EV your Pokemon some people I don't know how they EV, but they might... At first, there's nothing wrong with <clears throat> just testing out 252 and 252 and <clears throat> in something and just like leaving it like that and testing it for a while. That's what I normally do for simplicity. Or, or actually, I don't even normally do that anymore because I'm a perfectionist. But sometimes I do that if I just have no, no idea on how to use this Pokemon, but I think it would use max speed and max attack generally, and I figure I can always adjust it a little bit from there. Like if I feel like it might need just barely less or barely more speed, I'm not gonna re really fuss about it, uh, about the radio, I'm more just testing stuff. So for a Pokemon like this, when you're just testing, it doesn't matter, but when you wanna bring it to a tournament, what a lot of people don't understand is any speed more than you actually need is a waste. Like a lot of, I need to write that down. Uh, look at the speed tiers. Um, look at the speed tiers. Guess who has um, the speed tiers? My blog, it's free. And you know who else has it, I think? Victory Road or, or Trainer Cup. Victory Road actually has it. But for mine, I took it from my old Trainer Tower one and I just edited it. So you can look at this for free. I'll provide the link in the description. You should look at stuff like this. And some people, even like me, I bolded the most important stuff I felt like because certain things are not going to be very common, but other things are going to be common. Um, possibly, maybe not. Like Scarf Great Tusk might be common enough to worry about. Or Neutral Nature Pelipper and Tailwind. Or Choice Scarf um, Modest Hydreigon. But some things that wouldn't be used very much are going to be like Braviary, Gudra. I mean, probably not used that much. So you, I, you should really use all the team building resources to your advantage. I meant to say that. Look at the speed tiers. Uh, check your team 
with Maryland's uh, team builder. Um, I used I used to use Pyrotoss.com before they shut the site down. And I talked to the guy. It's because he he didn't want to keep paying for it. For some, I guess not enough people are using it. But I love the site. You could just paste it from Showdown your team and it would tell you all the weaknesses and stuff let me show you that i should link the maryland's team builder as well um i forget i think some people had some beef with maryland before because i think he he was kind of not a very great player or competitive player they said and and stuff but this is very useful this because you can type in whatever your team is hydreigon garchomp and then just pick some other Pokemon, doesn't matter. Um, Meow Scarada and, and uh, Dragapult. Uh, and maybe that's the only four you can think of that you want to use on your team. And then you look at this and you see, wait a minute, it has four ice weaknesses. Really, when it counts it as four, it's two from Garchomp, one. Actually, no, it doesn't. I think the Pyrotoss one used to count it like that, where it was like, it counted as two when it was four times weak to it, but this one actually doesn't do it like that. I don't know why. Maybe they should, but at least they show it here four times. So you see, ice is going to be a big problem for this team. Fairy, they're all weak to fairy and ice, and they're, three of them are weak to dragon, I guess, because I happen to pick a lot of dragon and dark types. So... So then you probably should redo this team because it's probably going to be too weak to ice and fairy. So you might change out, I don't know, change out something. Like maybe you don't want to use Dragapult. Maybe you want to use, oh, I need some fairy resistance. So then you think, oh, I'm going to try King Ambit. It looks better now, even though you still have a few three. It's Maybe it's okay to have three weaknesses, but I would like pretty much never have four Pokemon weak to the same thing like three to me is the max I mean uh, three weaknesses to the same type max even though some are kind of negligible um, like if they're sassed or not negligible if sashed though Poss maybe even though I would still kind of count that half, I'm going to say like half negligible. Uh, and what else? Uh, avoid four times weaknesses. Usually unless they are rare or you have sash or something like that so guard chomp yeah it does have a four times weakness but you do have you can terra stall at least use a defensive terra stall like guard chomp at least can use terra ground and only be two times weak to ice for example um perhaps air balloon on a four times ground weakness for example okay and what else should we talk about that's mostly what I use I also use my team building guide oh you should have a team building guide I should say that you should have a You should make your own or copy, well, make your own, I'd say. Make your own team building guide and ask for help on how to make one so you can uh, check your team if it has what it should have to do well in the metagame. So here's an example. You might say, I need a po a spore counter or at least 
you might need multiple sport counters like um, I need to ne I need to never lose almost never lose or almost never get spored because once you get spored it's like that's really a bad situation so you know how I team build is I like to avoid all the really bad situations so I might use Misty Train Grim. Um, you might use Safeguard, um, etc. Okay. In fact, I think I'll show you my team builder uh, team building guide. Even though I I don't constantly update this stuff, but okay. So to me, what's mandatory? is some sort of consistent sleep counter for your team that could be multiple grass pokemon it could be electric surge electric train uh misty train you know manual manual electric train the move just to be clear is not electric surge safeguard there's dragonite and a few others that learn it uh what you should also do is be specific and say which safeguarders are useful instead of having to check and remember all the good ones like you don't want to use some other bad safeguarder unless it becomes good later like Altaria is probably not going to be that useful even though it does have cloud nine and all these other Pokemon like Aloma Mola like you wouldn't want to use safeguard with that because you shouldn't be using that in the first place and then Good Misty Trainers, Grim, Snarl, Azumarill, Mimikyu, Gallade, Sylveon. It has to outspeed Amoongus. And it has to have something that counters it. There's, There might be more than this list. Yeah, but that's why I put etc. And then there's Dondozo plus Tetsugiri plus Flamigo uh, counters. They usually don't even run Flamigo anymore. But, you know, Parasong, Haze. Um, there's different ways of beating it. You have your own unaware. I got specific at the end because there were some Pokemon that got unaware, but it's like, am I really, are you really going to use some bad Pokemon that's, that's pretty much bad against everything else? Like Cloud Sire? No, probably not. And some counter, some combos were just really threatening, like Mousehold Ape. So I was like, I need a counter for this and I brainstormed with my friend to have him use Rocky Helm and Amoongus. I think about at the same time everyone else was trying to come up with it but I feel like I invented it independently. I was brainstorming all these ideas and I was like well I think someone used Rocky Helmet, Amoongus, that would actually be a good idea because it has Rage Powder and, and stuff and I don't think they're mostly using safety goggles yet even though they started using safety goggles later because they wanted to counter rocky helm and among us but at the time it was a good counter and now it's like um maybe not you know you can still spore them and probably survive the rage fist so the screens counter i figured well it depends on how often screens are used if screens are almost never used then you may not need a screens counter. But to me, it's not a huge inconvenience usually to have one move to counter screens like Brick Break. So almost always I've ran a move to counter screens because screens are really threatening otherwise. Unless you have like Meow Skirata that that beats it. Um, I should say Infiltrator I should add on crit moves like focus energy or um, what else? OHKO moves? Nah. Um, oh, infiltrator. Okay, and then some other stuff may not be as needed. Actually, I might say that speed control is even more needed, but there are teams I, c I can tell that do well even if they don't have the speed advantage. But to me, I don't think any team does super well unless it at least sometimes has the speed control, especially near the end of the game where it might be the most important. OK, 
Okay, so there's different trick room setters. There's different tailwind setters. There's different tailwind powerhouses, basically attackers, trick room attackers. That's just some of them. There's good scarf Pokemon. Men's might be decent with it to counter Meowth's Grotto. But certain things in open team sheets uh, wouldn't be that good like Ments. It's more to get the surprise kill on the Meowth's Grotto because they expect to at least get a hit off before they get dual wing beated. Even though some of them might just, ut might, uh, just manually switch out to avoid that. And then Bax Caliber, they might, yeah. See, if it's open team sheets, then a Scarfer that one-shots their Sash Pokemon isn't going to be as good anymore. And then priority moves, I would recommend on almost every team besides Fake Out. Something that works more than just one time and something that's usually more powerful. So I made a list. Um, earthquake immunities are always nice even if you don't use <coughs> sorry even if you don't use earthquake because the enemy is probably going to have some sort of ground pokemon especially in series two there's a huge weakness to ground ground because almost all the greatest pokemon are like weak to ground or at least aren't immune to it or resistant to it so that's why i brought mudsdale in hard trick room um I'll get to that probably late. Well, actually, let me see. Using, I don't know. I'll just write it down in case I didn't say it already. Um, using strat, giving up on using strategies that traditionally haven't been very consistent. Um, did I say? I think I did say some refine. No, I said up there. Okay, I'll add that to that then. Okay, the next thing. Focusing on Mons individually instead of as a team. So when I'm building a team, I don't think, oh, I want to really perfect the Salamence, and then I really want to perfect the Dragonite, and then I want to really perfect the Pelipper, and so on. Um, I might kind of do that when I'm testing, but I don't spend that much time trying to perfect stuff usually. Maybe a little bit, yeah, but just be open-minded and willing to change that to help out your team like individually maybe um salamance is best used with like this not necessarily the best way to use it it's just one way maybe life orb and you want fire blast to one shot the goldango if it terra steals even or even if it doesn't i mean to get the one shot on it instead of having to use flamethrower twice and then protect and you want I don't know tailwind and maybe let's just say theoretically that's the best way to use salamance but let's say you have Pelipper on the team is that is that the best way to use salamance probably not you I mean maybe but you you might consider having hurricane on the team instead of um, t tailwind because maybe you think or maybe t Pelipper already has tailwind and maybe you don't need a second one maybe Hurricane would be better in that case. So you shouldn't focus on uh, perf perfecting Mons individually. A little bit, yeah, when you're t first team building, but you need to be able to revise it later. So something may be worse on its own, but better as a team. Like Hurricane on its own is really just a 70 power move that isn't probably worth using, but if using rain is perfect accuracy, as long as they don't change the weather and there's still weather up. Okay, now being closed minded is, uh, so it seems like the problem is half of the time people are too closed minded and the other half of the time they're not, uh, what do you call it? 
they need to be more closed minded like they they try out stuff that that just won't work like obviously to me won't work but it's not obvious to them or even to experienced players some stuff may not be obvious you can always test it out there's nothing wrong with testing it out but to just assume it's going to be good in a tournament when you haven't tested it out enough uh, i don't know about that um test them out before uh before a tourney um a decent amount if you are unsure and then strategies that are inconsistent in general unless you really refine them um, I'm trying to think of some some examples by the way of being closed-minded or open-minded I think I already said for example with a certain set like on a standard set like Salamance like you have to be willing to think of her using hurricane since you have rain but strategies that are inconsistent in general. So here's an example. Um, hard trick room. So hard, hard trick room is generally seen as inconsistent. Um, but it isn't if you spend a lot of time refining it. Like my hard trick room team, I actually would say is hands down the best team that I've seen in recent tournaments for series two. And I'm not just saying that because of my ego. I'm saying that because I just know, because I felt like an, I had an advantage over everyone else's team. Like it wasn't that hard to, it shouldn't have been that hard to win. And I did win like almost all my battles in the last tournament. I won six the first six rounds five five rounds i was five and oh um before top cut and i won my first top cut round and i almost won the the other top cut round but i played so bad with my team that i just messed up in the heat of the moment a lot and made a lot of misclicks and ran out of time or whatever so it just really messed me up and um, I think I would have won the tournament if I had been focused more and other stuff. But anyways, um, hard trick room usually is pretty inconsistent because you rely on getting that trick room up. But I've been practicing with it so long that I know how to beat in prison. Uh, generally speaking, not you can't always beat it, but you almost always can. And lots of other ways people try to counter hard trick room I've just been testing out so many different ways to make hard trick room work because in theory it has very high potential because it can outspeed every like pretty much every team and just have a lot of power and what I like about hard trick room is you don't need a lot of prediction um, so it has a lot of, but has a ton of potential and doesn't require as much prediction uh, as most teams it doesn't require nearly as much because you have a lot of spread moves but with wide guard being more common it's a little harder to use hard trick room um, I often have to extend it because they're able to stall it out with stuff like wide guard or at least bluff the wide guard so it's like I almost never want to use a, a spread move but sometimes I do just to like um, keep them guessing so sometimes they might waste a move wide guarding when I wasn't going to go for a spread move but um, I generally would prefer playing it safe so I just usually use strong um, single attacking moves as well as strong spread moves so if they don't have wide guard I can just use those powerful spread moves and if they use uh, wide if they do use wide guard then I can just use the powerful single target moves in the hopes that they eventually will wide guard when they um, when I have those Pokemon out and waste a turn doing so. Now, here's some other things to think about. Strategies that the metagame hard counters. Um, usually this isn't a problem because you'll realize that the metagame hard counters you and you'll stop using it. But some people are really stubborn 
and they just keep using stuff that they want to use uh, because they've been using it for a while even if they know the metagame's hard countering it so just don't be stubborn should be obvious that what is working and what is not you can write down what beats you too and that's what I do make a big long list and then start thinking out all over but usually if you just compete in a tournament you you already know in your head you don't even really have to write it down because it's mostly a few things that beat you it's not like a hundred things but when you're playing the team on showdown ladder like a hundred two hundred times I'd write down like everything that you think either beat you led to you uh, losing or like put you at a disadvantage so you might say versus your hard trick room team intimidate was a problem because it slowed me down and guess what I did to that um, I put King Ambit on and then I, I noticed a lot of Arcanines are using they use a lot of Arcanine uh, with Will-O-Wisp and I'm like I'm tired of getting Will-O-Wisp I'm going to put Lumberry on my King Ambit and it actually did really well in the last tournament because of that and then um, should be obvious what yeah I read that there's some stuff that is overhyped up like the paradox Pokemon or the whatever people say is really good like the San Diego teams may be good but some of the stuff just because it got top cut doesn't mean it's that good like Corviknight uh, I, oh no I already I already put that in down here so as by the way um, I made the mistake of assuming that all these Paradox Pokemon would be possibly significantly better than others, but I didn't necessarily assume that. I just was kind of thinking, I'm going to just test out this Paradox boosted team with Pincursion and, and all these um, Quark Drive Pokemon like Iron Hands and, and Iron Thorns, and it turned out pretty good, except the the Iron Thorns was really good on ladder, it felt like, but I don't know why all of a sudden people realized that Iron Hands was really good and used it on a t in a tournament when I didn't see much on the ladder and I didn't see much wide guard either. It's like a lot of the people that compete in tournaments are like the cream of the crop and, and that's why it's different than the showdown ladder. So there's a different metagame. Just I would kind of assume in tournaments that you're more likely to face stuff that you see at the very top of the ladder or stuff that you see, even if they're not uh, good players, they might copy teams that placed well, that had those strategies. So you should expect those to be common. Now, there are better, possibly better older alternatives. Here's an example. Great Tusk. Um, I use Great Tusk um, over Mudsdale for my Trick Room team, but um, someone suggested Mudsdale or Dawn Fan, and I realized Mudsdale is better than Great Tusk for my team because it has good defensive typing and it is faster in Trick Room um, enough to outspeed Iron Hands and it isn't weak to as many attacks so it doesn't always need to Terra to survive them okay and it doesn't have headlong rush it has high horsepower, so you don't lower your defenses, and you can keep hitting hard as long as it doesn't miss. So, another thing, failing to see how the metagame has shifted or will shift over time. Stuff that is used in San Diego and placed and has placed well in other tournaments and after that will be more common, whether people think it is, whether it actually is good or not. Even though usually that stuff is pretty good, uh, but... What does this say? A lot of people think that because the team did well, that all the mons that Pokemon used were good and how they used it was good, ignoring the other variables that contributed to their success, like being a good battler, but not the best team builder. So there's a lot of people that are great battlers, but not good team builders. Like they may do 
really well under pressure when other people that are way better team builders may do worse under pressure and it's like the people that place high supposedly they're the better pokeball players i guess they are because they do better under pressure but they may not be the best team builders though that's the thing people don't get is like i think placing well in a tournament is not it is partly the team but i think it's more so how well do you do under pressure like how how many mistakes do you avoid making compared to somebody else Okay, here's another one. Iron Valiant, for example, um, was used a little bit in these tournaments and it did play somewhat high, but I don't think it was that, I don't think it's that good. It never did that well versus me or I don't think it did well versus anyone else that I could see too. Like it didn't really counter anything. Um, it's, okay, let me see doesn't specifically counter much or um, outshine many other Pokemon in general that I could see. When I even asked the people for their explanation of why they used Iron Valiant, they just said in general it was good, but they never explained why it was good. So if they can't explain why it was good, um, then it probably isn't good. So I'm going to even put that. If someone can't explain why something is good, it probably is not good. And they are probably overrating it because they haven't probably thought through all that about whether it is actually why they got second place in a tournament or not. And they might just want to justify how they team build it. Then other people, when they, they lose a battle, they might want to blame their team. Because I think deep down they know that they're to blame. And they don't want to admit it. That their, team, that their battling skills are to blame. And they might build the team. It's like usually people blame the wrong thing. Like, because of their, uh, like, psychologically, I think people, if they're bad at battling, they'll blame their team. If they're bad at team building, uh, they'll blame their battling. So, it, but that's not always the case. So, Corviknight, I tried it even after that tournament, and I never could do that successful with it. Even in the tournament that Alberto used it in, I believe... I never saw it do amazing or really well at anything in particular. It just seemed all right in general. But to me, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he, I even asked him, but he never replied back to me of why he used Corviknight or what it was good at. But I just think it isn't that good personally. But maybe he knows something I don't know. Stuff that is too inconsistent in the sense that it relies on low accuracy or other mods to give it some sort of boost, especially if the enemy can disrupt it. So Hurricane's a classic example. Thunder, uh, weather-based, sp like speed Pokemon that rely on weather, um, or Pokemon that you know would do really bad unless rain was there to to lower the power of fire moves or whatever, and. Manual weather, there's nothing necessarily wrong with manual weather if you don't rely that much on it. Like a Protosynthesis Mon is still good even without the weather. And a Fire Pokemon like Arcanine or Iron Moth might still be good without, without Sunny Day. But Sunny Day would be an improvement to it. That's fine. But I'm talking more about the Pokemon that kind of rely on Sun to be good. Like usually the Chlorophyll Pokemon like Lilligant or Sawsbuck. And... Weather plus Trick Room is... Yeah, so there's some Pokemon that I put even lower tier as lower tier, like Sunflora, because it relies on both um, weather... Well, both Sun and Trick Room to do well with, like, solar power. So I wouldn't use a Pokemon like that personally. That would be just pretty low tier because you're relying on the weather plus the Trick Room. It's like... The chances of both of those happening at the same time, it's somewhat likely, but it's not likely enough to...
justify it unless it just maybe if you can get it up consistently enough and it does amazing in trick room but i don't think it does so much more amazing than the alternatives for just having trick room up or just having weather up that like it's worth justifying it and another thing um this goes back to the idea of setting mons into tiers so if you properly set them into tiers that should solve almost all of this when i put stuff in the top tier I should say that's more of like a usable uh, Pokemon list, but that's not the only usable list. That's just like the mines that are somewhat slappable on a team, but other teams can use that use weather. I'm not saying you should never use weather like Hurricane and, and with rain or Swift Swimmer with rain. Dreadnought can be really good, but I think you should make sure that for example dreadnought has pelipper with it not you're just you're not just using dreadnought by itself so if you put dreadnought and if someone were to put dreadnought on top tier um i would say maybe if it's used with pelipper but even then i wouldn't say it's necessarily top tier because it does kind of rely on rain to be good but at least it can do amazing in rain and have a lot of potential so there's nothing wrong with using it at a tournament i think it got like top four but with like i think aaron brock used a team with it with terror grass and life or one rock slide and liquidation and whatnot so another thing gimmicks or combos like weakness policy activation with an ally boosting it or something like that even M mouse ape we were finding out it can be somewhat consistent, but even if the combo is consistent, it's like, well, you have to think about your team as a whole. If you use Mouse Ape dedicated to boosting up the Rage Fist, it's like, well, can you pick Mouse and Ape? Just kind of slap it on, like pick, pick it as one of your um, four Pokemon on another type of, against another type of team. Like, can you pick, for example, Anahalape without relying on the mouse hole to help it. It's like that's what you have to be worried about and if the combo is even consistent or not. Like there may be uh, whatever like you turn against your weakness policy Pokemon into um, psychic train but then you may find out oh they might just fake you out you know and call your bluff fake you out as your U turning or whatnot. I guess that partly comes down to prediction but certain things where it's like if you rely too much on on getting these boosts, whatever, from an ally, you're not going to have a very consistent team. So I don't know about something like that at a tournament. There's almost there's almost no good combos. There's very few. There's like the good ones I would say are Dondozo Tatsugiri, especially plus Palmot, plus Palmot. Um, Sometimes, okay. Indeedy Armor Rouge is dec is pretty good. Uh, Mouse Ape is it's good, but overall for your team, I don't think it's worth it because of what I said earlier, you have to basically dedicate your Pokemon, the Mouse and the Ape, to helping each other. But then they don't really help the team if you have to focus it so much on that. And if you try to make it help the team, then they don't help each other enough to be probably worth bringing. So it's like damned if you don't, damned if you do, damned if you don't. And there's some other strategies that are decent. So I used to think Grim Snarl was decent, but with all the screen counters, probably not. There's very few count. There's very few combos that are good. I think the top placed teams in San Diego they use like Don Dozo Tatsugiri Palmot, or they used a weather. They did use yeah Pelipper with like Dreadnought, or um, the winning team used a bunch of good stuffs Pokemon. So that's not really on this list because it's not a combo. But a lot of really good stuffs Pokemon like they used. He used Bax Caliber, Garganacle, um, Garganacle, I guess you could call it. 
yeah, Garganico's actual name for it. Um, let's see, using a team that may seem technically better, but you have almost no experience in it. Oh, by the way, did I list uh, Frig and Harry? Um, yeah, that the new combo instead of that is Iron Hands plus. I meant to say Iron Hands plus um, Frig instead of Hariyama. But to me, that was kind of like the same thing as Hariyama, except way better on average. Or maybe not way better, but just better. Okay, it is bulkier and like, I don't know, just having more than one stab offensively and trigger is really good too. Now, here's another thing you probably shouldn't do is even though you may find a team that may seem technically better you may have no experience in it very little and you may do worse with the team because you may not know anymore how to counter this or that because you're used to relying on so and so to counter it that's why you want to get your team pretty refined far before the tournament and only have to change like maybe one two pokemon so that you already know how those changes will affect your team and not just find out at the tournament that shoot you find you find out that you have like five weaknesses to fire or you're too weak to this or you don't know how to counter this anymore so another thing is if you keep feeling like you you're trying out all these teams and you can't find a consistent team that you're really happy with it's like well, maybe it's not your time to go to spend all your time and money to go to a tournament and play unless you think it's still worth it even if you get a really low place. It's whatever makes you happy, but I personally don't usually like to go to tournaments anymore unless I feel like I have a decent chance to win unless it doesn't inconvenience me very much like an online tournament. But having to travel like five hours to San Diego, gas money and all that, $70, it's like... I don't know unless I feel like I'm gonna do decent and then assuming that this is one thing that I've done too much is assuming that just because I did really well on ladder with something that it um, will do well um, like stuff I've used before I need to go back to this um, strategies that that rely on a lot of setup like I would use Curse, I think I would use like Curse um, Gigalith years back with Instruct Aranguru and it was doing really well on the ladder but all of a sudden in the tournament people are using stuff they never were, almost never were using on the ladder like Taunt and whatnot. So it's like that really caught me off guard and I couldn't do what I normally relied on doing. So I wouldn't rely on a lot of setup in general because it probably isn't going to work out unless it's proven to work out for other people very consistently. So you should assume that the meta won't be, you should assume that the meta will be different at a tournament and for ranked battles than for, um, Pokemon Showdown from the Pokemon Showdown ladder. Just for some reason, people like to use different stuff that may throw you way off guard. Um, also, you shouldn't assume that just because someone did well with their team or you did well with your team that your whole team is good when maybe it isn't. Maybe there's parts you could pick apart um, out of it and make it better, even if you won, won the whole tournament. And using stuff that is all very standard. Um, open Team Sheets does reward standard stuff, but it still rewards unique strategies that you could say are that should be standard or could be standard, like but maybe it's not the most common standard strategy. Like Don Dozo with Terra Dragon, for example, I would say that wasn't the most common Terra, even though I guess you could argue that no Terra was that much more common than another, 
but definitely some grass resistant typing so something that is different and catches people off guard would be really useful but something that's also good at the same time for example if people aren't used to Farig blocking their priority moves all game long as long as you keep Farig in then maybe that could give that Pokemon a huge niche your team a huge niche over them so it pays even if they can see your open team sheet using something different that they didn't prepare for could really throw them off guard like they may see in the open team sheet you have whatever a mudsdale and if their whole team is weak to ground there's not much they can do if they don't have they don't even have a terra to resist ground then there's not much they can do so sometimes using something different um, might be better especially if it counters the metagame so thanks for watching this long video i kind of made it for a friend but also for anyone else to learn from i've been playing the game for many many years and i wouldn't say i'm a great battler in the sense that um, i make great moves under pressure i used to be a lot better that than than I am now at that. Um, I used to get a lot less nervous, but I've been like less motivated and and not as uh, what do you call it, just less motivated in general. And playing the game, unfortunately, less for fun than I used to. I used to really be a lot more passionate about the game. And my first year competing, I got top eight in the world, but uh, now it's more like I don't know. I I really shouldn't play just to like prove that I know how to play the game well and stuff because you can't prove to people that don't want you to prove it to them uh, in the first it's like I shouldn't even care what people say like even if they say I'm bad at Pokemon like I really shouldn't care what they say because like yeah sometimes I am bad at Pokemon but like I, I know myself and I, I don't need to you don't need to worry what people say so much. I have, unfortunately just care too much. I have a bad habit of caring too much what people say or think instead of just ignoring it and accepting that people are going to be wrong and I don't always have to correct them. Um, but I have been doing pretty well in these tournaments. Like I did get top six in the Pokemelly tournament that had almost 100 people. And I almost top cut the Nina Bros tournament. I might, might enter a tournament this weekend, but I don't know. I have to, like I said, feel motivated. Because the thing is, is what people don't get is that, like, um, the people that do badly in a tournament, it's better to compete in a tournament to get the experience and do badly in it than not at all. Like, the people that don't compete at all, I think partly they don't want to compete because they're worried about what people will say about them. Like, oh, they're a bad battler because they went one and five. When actually they may be a great battler and just weren't prepared for that tournament, you know? Or who knows why, or maybe they got sick, or maybe they had to leave halfway through the tournament. People just don't know the circumstances around everything and certain people have more people helping them they have more friends more connections so I don't think I don't like I've never liked how the culture of VGC has headed since the first couple years after like I forget when but like the Twitter age the social media age like that's what everyone start the newer people that weren't veterans I would say that weren't playing it since near the beginning of when uh, VGC came out they uh, just kind of you know have all these opinions on Twitter and say certain people are washed up and stuff I would I think I would almost never say that about somebody because it's like the people that say somebody's washed up um, probably were never never very good in the first place because it's like I think to make themselves feel better about themselves, they try to say that someone's washed up. And it's like, dude, but you're a nobody. Like, why are you even saying anything? Like, if you've never done well in a tournament, done that well, or you're just not that good of a battler in general and you've never been that well, it's like, how do you have a right to 
to say that about someone or even like even if that's true that they're supposedly washed up it's like well I don't know if that's the best thing to point out because people are naturally gonna look at how how well you've done and it's just you know it's just not a nice thing to say about people you know I don't I don't go to Ray Rizzo and tell him email I mean uh, go to his inbox and say hey you're washed up because you're not top you're you're not first in worlds anymore you know if it's like that's the thing with being too successful sometimes is people expect you to to keep doing what you were doing earlier like if you won a bunch of worlds they might i don't know i'm not ray rizzo but i would imagine he some people i mean most people wouldn't say that about ray rizzo or wolfie or whatever but they would against the people that aren't like one of the most successful people like they're pretty successful in their career but they haven't been uh, as successful as other people they might say that someone's washed up if they got like top eight in worlds like five years ago and and um and now when they enter tournaments the last few years they've only been getting like um not quite top cut or barely top cut or something they might say that person's washed up but um I think you have to not let people get to you and I need to remember that that I need to just play for fun like if I get last in a tournament I'd rather get last in a tournament and have fun than to be worrying so like get second in a tournament and be worried so much like like dang it I wish I would have got first so that people could say better things about me or show my team to more people or get more popular or whatever it's like that's really shouldn't be what Pokemon's about and if you are playing like that you're playing for the wrong reasons and you're probably going to do worse in tournaments than if you had a different mindset because you're going to be so worried about your place that in a real battle you're going to get probably extra nervous and just do worse so just play for the right reasons just play for fun and if you're passionate about it that's great but don't play it just to either win money or to or to um, impress people because you're just going to find yourself miserable and even if you do uh, successful you even if you are successful in the tourney like like I I got top eight, eight or six I should say um, I don't know I do feel somewhat successful but not really because nobody really talks about you unless you're like like the winner of the tournament or like maybe the runner up um, unless it's a big tournament, then maybe they might talk about use kind of, but people just focus on like the top, like maybe four people. And then like everyone else is like, they just don't seem to care about. I'm not saying they should like, you know, maybe they don't need to care that much about everyone else. But I, th I think people just need to respect everyone as a battler, but that's just kind of my side rant to all of this. So Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. It might be about mechanics. There's only a few mechanics that I feel like are affected by. Um, I think I already actually made a video about this. The mechanics about series one and two. And how things change from OTS. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.